Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today I'm going to show you a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy. This is a common case in our emergency practice, but it's very common to face confusing states when it's the matter of diagnosis. A 35-year-old married female patient came with amenorrhea for more than two months. She had a previous history of miscarriage four months back and after that there was a menstrual irregularity so she was a little bit confused about this pregnancy. She came with lower abdominal pain for three to five days around which was more on the left side. Now the history may favor for the ectopic or a ruptured ectopic pregnancy but for confirmation she did ultrasound and beta HCG. The first beta HCG was around 500 and after 3 to 4 days it become 400 around. Now it makes a confusing state for the clinician to understand the ongoing situation. Now on ultrasound she went for the transabdominal ultrasound. Make sure in my country it's not easy to convince a female patient for transvaginal ultrasound. They usually prefer transabdominal one though clinicians prefer transvaginal ultrasound a lot. Now on transabdominal ultrasound, there was a cystic lesion at the left adnex which was showing the feature of hemorrhagic cyst. There was no other peritoneal collection so that made the confusion between hemorrhagic cyst and a concealed hematoma as there was no other gestational sac found nearby. So she went to another hospital for transvaginal ultrasound recommended by previous ultrasound practitioner who did the transabdominal ultrasound twice and now the next clinician sent the patient to me to do a transvaginal ultrasound to make a confirmed diagnosis. So I was a little bit nervous because all the ultrasound experts did the ultrasound were very good. But you have to understand that all the ultrasounds done were transabdominal. So let's see what we have got on ultrasound now. Here you can see the transvaginal ultrasound of the left adnexa. Here you can see a large heterogeneous area with internal slightly reticular pattern. So either it's a mass lesion as they were also thinking about the malignant situation which is unlikely I think. So this large heterogeneous area here might be solid or might be some concealed hematoma. We can easily confirm it using Doppler ultrasound. Now if you look here, you can see there is a cystic area here. Within it, there is an embryo-like thing. And you can see some follicles out here which indicates that this area is the part of ovary. Now all the confusions you can make from this picture can be solved using Doppler ultrasound. Here's the Doppler picture. You can see there is no vascularity inside this large area, indicating it to be a concealed hematoma. Now here you can see the vascularity here. This vascularity is the vascularity of ovary. So this structure is the ovary. I took sample from these vessels. This was the vessel coming from the uterine arterial branch and this side was getting supply from the ovarian arterial branch. Now what is this? This is an embryo out here which is dead already. You can't see any heartbeat inside. And you can see this echogenic line out here. This is nothing but the umbilical cord. So from this image, my overall impression is a case of adnexal dead ectopic pregnancy which has got ruptured, making a concealed hematoma at this region. So here's the magnified image of the dead embryo and this echogenic line is nothing but the umbilical cord. You see this gestational sac is slightly irregular as it's already got ruptured but still some amniotic fluid seen here which made it easy to tell as a gestational sac. You can see surrounding thick echogenic line which is the outline of the gestational sac and it is located adjacent to the left ovary. We can confirm it an ovary with the vascularity and obviously with internal follicles.
Now here you can see the concealed hematoma. I can see internal reticular pattern which is the pattern of hemorrhage but obviously you should use color doppler to exclude it from any mass lesion. Here is another picture. You can see the embryo here. And this is the ovary. And this is a large hematoma here. This is the part of uterus which is not a focus here because it was completely normal without any internal fluid or thickened endometrium. Here's another picture of the hematoma adjacent to the left ovary and a dead embryo within an irregular gestational sac. Here's another view with annotations. Here's the picture. You can see the dead embryo at the ectopic location. There's the left ovary and there's a large hemorrhage. The crown rum length measures around 14.8 mm, which corresponds to 7 weeks and 6 days of gestation. On transvaginal ultrasound, if it was a live embryo, then obviously you should see the cardiac pulsations. The hematoma approximately measures around 9 cm by 5 cm, so it's a large hematoma. And here you can see the dead ectopic pregnancy adjacent to the left ovary and also the hemorrhage adjacent to it. Here's the color Doppler picture. You can see the normal vascularity of the ovary and there is no vascularity inside the hematoma. You can see the vascularity peripheral to the gestational sac but no flow within the embryo. So in summary, adjacent to a normal sized left ovary, an irregular gestational sac with surrounding thick layer and internal dead embryo without any cardiac activity is seen. The crown norm length is 14.8 mm which corresponds to 7 weeks and 6 days of gestation. A huge heterogeneously hypoechoic localized collection with internal reticular pattern indicating hemorrhage is seen adherent to the left ovary. So, these features conclude it as a case of left adnexal ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Now the take-home message. In case of ectopic pregnancy, a pseudogestational sac inside the uterus is a very common finding making confusion. Always remember that the true gestational sac doesn't lie at the center. It lies slightly laterally, like on the anterior wall or posterior wall because the implantation occurs anteriorly or posteriorly. But the pseudogestational sac, which is nothing but the endometrial slight collection, lies at the central part. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and try to visit imagingstudy.com for more cases. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.